Datetime format is one of the most versatile functions in Airtable, and it's also often super useful in combination with other functions. But there are a couple quirks that you have to understand to get the most out of this function. So dates in Airtable always include a time, even if that time is not showing. So for example, with this date field that I have here, if I open it up um, and I toggle it to include the time, hit save, it's gonna show me uh, 12 a.m., which is the default time. So even if you're not using the time, it's there in the background. And I'll just get rid of that again because I'm not gonna use times. The date time format function takes any date time and formats it in any way that you want it. So in its most simple usage, maybe I just wanna take this date here and show the month and the day. So I'll create a new field, call this month and day. And then we're gonna create a formula field. And in this formula, I'm gonna start typing date time format. And when I select the function, you can see I've got my little yellow documentation over here that shows us how to use it. So it's gonna take a date time like this one here, and then it's gonna output a string of text. So for my input, I will put the date. And then for the output, we always need to use quotations. So I'm gonna put my quotations here. Then I'm gonna say month with four Ms and then day with two days. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna be the full written out month. So I'll hit create field. Now I've got November 23rd, 24th, 25th. Now if I wanted just an abbreviated month, I could just get rid of one of these M's here. And now I've got like this, or if I wanted the actual number, then I can do this. So obviously we can use all of these different conventional formats, but we can also format in all kinds of other crazy ways as well. For example, let's say I wanna know what the weekday is. So let's create a new field, call it weekday. And then we'll make a new date time format function. And this is gonna take the date. And then I wanna put out the weekday, which is four Ds, closing parentheses, create field. Now I've got the weekday. I could also do the week number of the year. That's a W. The quarter, that's a Q. And just basically anything you can imagine. And the place that we can find all of these different format specifiers is on the Airtable website. This tab here, which I will link in the video description below. And so here we can see all of the different format specifiers here and then the output that you'll get. Keep in mind that because a date time always has a time, we can also format and show any time format as well, including seconds and even time zone. Let's just switch this back to the weekday since that's what the field is called. So obviously the stuff that we've gone over so far is super useful, but it's also important to know what date time format can't do as well. And I actually already mentioned the main limitation of daytime format, which is that it takes a date in, but it does not output a date, it outputs text. And that's true even if we're using a full format that shows month, day, year. So let's create a new format, for example, and let's just say we just wanted to rearrange month and day. So call this UK format, and then let's make this a formula field. And we're gonna use a datetime format function that's gonna take the date and then it's gonna output day, month, year. And so this looks like a real date, but you'll notice if I go into the formatting here, I can't change anything about it like I could with this one, right? This one, um, I can toggle it to include the time or display the time zone. And this one I can't because this is just text. And that means if I wanna use a date add function to add or subtract time from a date or use a date time diff function to see the difference between due dates, I can't do that with anything that's used date time format. I could use those with a date, but I can't do it with the text output of a formatted date. So if I have a formatted date like this that I do wanna add time to or treat in other ways like a date, then I need to use the flip side of the date time format function, which is date time parse. So let's open up a new field here and we'll just call this parse date. And this is gonna be a formula. And then we'll call up date time parse. And, and date time parse, you can see, takes in a date string 
and a format. And then what it outputs is a date time. So here, let's take the UK format. And then in quotations, we're going to give it the format that we used here. So that's day, month, year, close that off and then create field. And, and so what that's given us now is an Airtable date time. And since I'm in the US, it's going to show it to me in my local formatting, but this is the same date that we had here and date time parse can be super useful because let's say you're importing a spreadsheet from outside of Airtable that's formatted in a weird format, any format imaginable, you can go in here and just tell Airtable the exact format to parse into an actual date time. And obviously we would never use date time format to make a piece of text just to make it back into a date, but there are super useful combinations of these two functions that we can create. So let's say I had a list of dates like this one in 2022, and I wanted to replicate that list, but I want them to be in the year 2023. So I want to take the month and the day, but then I want to change the year. I can do that by creating a new field. We'll call this 2023 dates. Make that a formula field. And then we'll use a date time format function, taking the date and outputting just the month and the day. So mm slash dd. And then I'll put another slash here, close the parentheses, and then I'll use an ampersand and add the text 2023. So because we're outputting text, we can just add some more text to it. And then this is going to put out, you know, 11, 23, 2023 in text. And so now we just need to wrap this in a parse function. So we'll say daytime parse. which takes the text, which is here, comma, and then in quotations, we'll say month, day, year, create field. And now we've got these in this year. And I guess I could use a date add function to do the same thing, right? Because in this case, we're just adding one year to these, but we could, you know, use it to do uh, say the first of the month in this year, or we could just do any custom date. So it's not just adding one year, but we could actually just completely rearrange dates or just take certain pieces. Probably the most common place I use the date time format function is in the primary field here, this first column on the left, because often it's nice to use a date to differentiate different records, different rows that we've got here. So let's say I wanted to have the name be a combination of the, uh, the weekday and the date. So let's say weekday and a space and then the date. I just put the date in here like this, hit save. Then I get this super long format, which is called the ISO 8601 formatted date. But since I know daytime format, it's super easy for me to format it in any of these ways here and just add that onto the end too. If you are in a hurry, another function that's useful is the date string function, which just outputs text in a specific date format. So if I just say date string date, it just outputs year, month, day. And so if you're in a hurry and you don't want to write out a full date time format function, uh, that's a quick one to use. So that's a wrap on the date time format function. To learn about another of Airtable's most useful date functions, check out this video here. I get a huge boost from hearing about where you are in your learning process. So please drop a comment below and let me know what you're working on or what you want to learn about next. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.